Hello, this is the Cobra S40C, which is a petrol-powered lawn scarifier. This is how it arrives, a good, strong cardboard box. So what we're going to do is just slip the tape open, open it up and get it out and show you how to put it together so you can get to work on your lawn. We've unpacked it now, we've got the scarifier on the bench and we can start to assemble it. So this is the main scarifier itself with the engine on it. We've got the collection bag here, we've got the handles that we've got to assemble and then we've got the various nuts, bolts, wing nuts and everything we need. We've got the spare cartridge to change which puts it from a wire tines to the solid tine and then we've got the two manuals that you need to keep safe. One of them is for the engine and one of them is for the scarifier itself. So the first First thing we need to do is to get the handlebars on it. So a little top tip before you start to put the handlebars on is just to loosen everything off and take the wing nuts off so that you're all ready for when you come to put it together. The first part of the handlebar to go on is this and you'll notice that there is a little bracket here where the cord will go through for the pull start and that's on this side so we need to make sure that they correspond so that's going to be on the right hand side and we're going to put this on the outside of this frame here this bracket and the top bolt we're going to use not one of the wing nuts but one of these bolts with a square end that will then fit into that and fit through there and the square will fit into it and then we can put onto it one of our locking nuts so I'm going to put one on there just put it on finger tight to start with and then I'm going to put the other one in position on this side just to hold it where we need it to be so that goes into there and through the hole onto the frame just twist it around so the square locks in then we can put the little nut on there so we can just do those finger tight to start with and then we need the locking nuts next or the wing nuts rather so the wing nuts go on and they go on from the outside through so we're going to push that through to there like that. and these have got a bit of a curve on them so they just sit in nice into place we then put a washer on a flat washer and then we can put the wing nut on tighten that round nice and tight and then we can do the same on the other side it only takes just a, a couple of minutes to get it all ready with the first part of the handlebar And then we can tighten up the lock nuts with a 13 millimeter spanner. Nice and tight, just double check the wing nuts tight. Then repeat on this side. So first part, nice and secure firmly in place and then we can lift over the top section like this just making sure that we don't snag any of the cables or trap them and this one is then going to fit on the outside like this so it fits around the outside like that and what we're going to do is then put through just line the holes up one of the bolts through there and get it into position and a wing nut after a washer let's tighten that and then the final one goes in on this side just here and just make sure it's lined up push that through make it in position and then tighten it up there we go so that's all in position now and just finally what I'm going to do is we've got a cable clip here I'm just going to spring this off from around this handlebar 
and then that will just hold that cable in place to stop it moving about. So that one is nice and secure at this side and then we've got another one just here, for this cable, so I'm just going to clip that off and just root that round there and just clip that into position and that one's got that cable held firmly in place and stops all that moving. One final thing we can do, this has got a recoil here and we've got this little bracket here to hold it into so I'm just going to push in the engine brake lever here just to take some of the compression off the engine and then I can just slowly pull that out and then I can wind that into position like that so that's all ready for when we come to start it. So that's basically set that part of the scarifier up. So before we take it outside and fuel it up ready for use, I'm just going to show you how you can adjust the depth of scarifying. When it arrives in the box, it's everything is wound down to get the machine as low as possible to get it in the box. So what we tell you to do is to wind this out. This is the height adjustment knob here. Um, and if you turn it 10 full turns or 20 half turns up, that is about halfway. So I've turning those now like that so there we go that is 20 half turns up and the reason we do that is because it has a transport mode so when you're moving it from lawn to lawn maybe across a path uh, or a gravel area you don't want the tines to be digging in the ground so this lever here lifts the transport side of it so we can see that that once it's down would be in the scarification mode um, so that's why we have to adjust that first once you've done that you can then adjust it with this to go a little bit deeper if you want to or if you think it's going too deep you can wind it out a little bit more to lift the cassette with the blades on so you're getting shallower when you're scarifying so but it is important that you do that first and then when you've finished scarifying on the lawn and you want to move it off then we move it back into this position and the whole bed will just lift to clear the blades off the ground. The other thing I'll show you before we take it outside is how to change the cassette underneath. At the moment, and when it arrives, it's got these solid tines in there, but you can change those for the wire scarifier like this. So we're just gonna take one out and pop the other one into place. I've just turned it round so I can show you better how to change the cartridge underneath. Before we do that, we're gonna take off the spark plug cap there. So that just pulls off. That means the engine can't accidentally start while we're working underneath it. And then what we do is we're just gonna tilt it back like that, just put it back on its wheels so it's quite secure like that. And then what we need is two 10 millimeter spanners because the bolts go all the way through and we're taking out these four nuts and bolts just here. So I'm going to put that on there and just slacken those off. When we've got the four nuts and bolts out, then we can take the cap off there and this plate slides out. I'm holding the, the cartridge in place with my other hand and then it just simply just slides out like that. And it comes out as easy as that. And then the tine one just simply goes back in exactly the same way. You can only put it in one way, so there's no way you can get it wrong. We've got to put the, the hexagonal bit into there. It just needs a little bit of a wiggle just to get it in and then that slides into position like that and then we can secure that into place with the brackets at the side here so that one slides in like that and what we can do to start with just to hold that in position is we can just put one of the, the bolts through and just put on by finger tight one of the nuts and again just here so that just holds that into position and then this is also a cover just to protect the bearing here. So then what we have to do is to line everything up, just push that into place so that those holes line up like that. So push the bolt through from that side and then we can put a little nut on there. 
So it's all switched over now. We've taken out the solid tines. We've put in the spring tines. So what I need to do is just tighten up these nuts and bolts really securely and then we can take it out and we'll put oil and petrol in and we'll show you how to start it. The oil filler is here at the front of the engine block and it's also the dipstick, quite a short little dipstick there. And so we're gonna put that nice and safe. The oil is provided with the scarifier. This is a four stroke engine oil. It needs 600 milliliters in this engine and this is a 600 milliliter bottle. So I'm gonna put the contents of this bottle into it. It's quite a small hole to pour into and it's difficult to get a funnel like that. So what I'm gonna do is just tip the engine back a little bit. This is fine to do when you're first filling it like that. There's no petrol in it or anything at this stage so the engine can't start and we're just going to tip that back and then I can pour slowly the contents of this bottle, the whole 600 millilitres slowly into there. So there we go, 600 millilitres in there, it's all drained in nicely and then we can just pop in the dipstick so we can now put that back into its flat position. And although we know we've put the right amount of oil in there, it's good practice to check the oil level on a regular basis anyway. So I'm just gonna take out the dipstick now just to make sure that it's showing on it and just wipe it clean and then put it back in. Just screw it in and then out again. And there we can see we've got oil there on the dipstick on those little hatch marks. So that's perfect, we've got a full sump. So that can now go back in. Petrol is unleaded. So the petrol cap is just here, we can take that off. So always use fresh petrol when you're filling a machine. Don't use anything that you've had hanging around for a long time. So this is unleaded into here. Okay. Any little spillages just wipe off and then we put the lid on like that and then we're ready to take it onto the lawn and I can show you how to start it. Before we start scarifying we need to put on the collection bag there so we just lift the flap and that just simply hooks on the back like that and that holds it into place. Um, once the wheels are in the, in the engaged state, then we can fine tune it and adjust the height of the blades or the wire tines for the scarifying with this here. This engine has an on off switch, which is just there. So to be able to start it, we've got to be on the on position. And then just around here where the carburetor and the air filter is, we've got a petrol fuel tap so we need to make sure that the fuel is on again when you finish with it for storage you can turn the fuel off if you wish to and we also got the manual choke there so we need to put the choke on and remember if you've had the spark plug cover off to change the cassette or to do anything on the engine make sure that that's back in position otherwise it will never start when we get to the top here we've got this handle which is the engine brake handle so that needs to be pulled back before we can start the engine and then when we've got the engine going we can engage the blades by lowering this handle that will lower the cutters onto the grass so it really is as simple as that so all i need to do now we've got the choke on we've got the engine brake back is to pull the recall it's a new engine it's the first time it's had petrol in, so it might take a while to get it through to the carburetor. So expect to pull it maybe two, three times to get it going in the first instance. And to stop the engine, we just release the lever here. And of course, when you're starting from cold on the choke, once the engine is firing, we can gradually turn the choke off to get the engine running as normal. So there it is, very easy to set up. It will make a marvelous job of scarifying your lawn. And remember, refer to the manuals, the one on the scarifier for any adjustments or changing the cartridges. And there's also the engine manual, so you can look after that as well. So enjoy scarifying and I hope your lawn's in great condition. Remember to register your Cobra online at www.cobragarden.co.uk. Always have your Cobra serviced regularly. Check the website for your nearest dealer.